Well, I'm going to begin, uh, guys. I mean, the film, uh, the, the series is described as hard-boiled cyberpunk. Oh. Uh, you you must have heard that and just thought, yeah. I'll, I'm getting involved in this project. <laughs> I actually just heard that for the first I think, time. Right yeah, now. I, I don't think I don't think that was the way it was sold to me. Hard-boiled cyberpunk. cyberpunk. I, I don't it. remember Lita Calagridis cool. on my first <laughs> kind of and say, "So, James, it's hard-boiled cyberpunk." <laughs> Is that your Lita Calagridis? <laughs> yeah, that's my impression. Um, she, no, no, that that is. But having said that. The rest of the shit on the plate was uh, so important, and yeah. the stuff that she was talking about when she was talking to me about um, about the part and the show, um, it, it was so expansive and ambitious, and talking about so many things that mattered to us today, you know, uh, social economics and identity politics and uh, and immortality and love and war mm -hmm. and poverty and you know, I mean, it's. There are some shows where you only have a couple of little themes that you're working all nicely, uh, talking nicely about. On a show like this, there are literally dozens. There's something in here for everybody. It's very exciting. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I find always that science fiction and sort of family movies as well sometimes are the easiest way to access the big themes yeah, of true. real life, isn't yeah, it? More yeah. so than kind of dramas. You think sometimes we almost need to step out of reality yeah. to analyse and be a reality. little bit further away from it. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's because it's sometimes it's a bit easier to be able to see our world through another. Yeah. Mm. So it's yeah. easier to think that you're looking at something else or people way in the future in order to really have a mirror up to yourself yeah. and really confront some of the things that need confronting. Because, I mean, the, the world created here is just incredible. It must be amazing as, as actors in this show that, I guess, you when you're shooting, you know, it's, I'm guessing a lot of it's kind of this all special effects adding kind of post-production, that when you go and watch it, I mean, to see it all put together must be kind of overwhelming, to see this world created in, yeah, it is. In I mean, I, was, I, I mean, I can only compare it to when I did Rome, which was a very similar thing. When we were taken out to the back lot of Rome and they said, do you want to come and see the set? And it was the biggest standing set ever built. It was 15 acres. It was gigantic. And it was only then that you suddenly realised, this, this is massive. Yeah. And it was a similar feeling on this. It was the idea that you see what they're going to try and achieve and build with this world, um, and it's not just a spaceship out there in the universe, mm -hmm. it's an entire world, and that's very exciting to work on. As an actor, it's nice when, it's nice to have green screen, mm -hmm. and then it's nice when actually there are sets built around you that you get to interact with, and locations that are really kind of fulfill the vision of, of this kind of massive show, and we had the advantage of those things, specifically in episode seven of the show. We, we actually go to an entirely different world and a different time, and uh, in my mind, there was something that would, I think, be so hard to achieve that we actually pulled off in a way that is really beautiful it really feeds you as an actor to be in some of, to actually be physically in some of those places. Yeah. And I mean, do you think that something like this could happen in the future? Maybe not to this same extent, but this idea, I think Black Mirror have explored this theme too, this idea of kind of having elements of our personality or parts of us digitalized, kind of like immortalized. Yeah. That's the frightening thing. You know, it's only 2018. An enormous amount of our lives are stored digitally, digitally already. They may well be edited versions of ourselves, and maybe not our darkest thoughts, although in some cases that's not the case as well. They are very much our darkest thoughts online. But already we are digitised to a certain degree. So the leap is not that far, mm -hmm. I don't think. People are talking about having transmitters in your head. People are talking about being able to phone, make phone calls by having a chip in your ear already. You know, we just... It, it doesn't feel that far away to me, which is kind of terrifying. Mm -hmm. Would you guys sign up to something like this, if this was this idea of like of the, beyond your own life, being able to live you know, in, in other skins What's and shells? What's so interesting is that you know, life is never presented like in that way. I just think we find ourselves places. Like, I'll never let my children be on the phone all the time. Mm -hmm. But you find yourself in a situation where you live in a world where everyone is... You're, you're outside of a conversation, and how comfortable are you outside, of, totally outside of a conversation? That's one of the things I feel. Like, you know, it's, it's sometimes challenging to be outside of it enough to make the most responsible decisions all the time. Yeah. I would yeah. like to say that there are things I wouldn't do, because I believe that this, this is dangerous. Um, I don't know that if I lived in that world, I would not also be resleeving. That's That's the honest truth. Yeah, true. If I lived in that that's, world, I would probably be of that world, and I would probably be resleeving. My my feeling about it is that I am the only person I know who I could fully trust with this technology. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and, <laughs> that, and for that reason alone, uh, you, we should not have it because <laughs> because there are too many other people, crazy people out there, tend to be very wealthy people. And you never really trust the wealthy. Um, who I wouldn't trust with this technology to, to, to be immortal. I mean, imagine some of our politicians deciding that they could be immortal and never die. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> On that positive note, I think that's the end. Thank you so much. <laughs> for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!